Oh boy, boy. Hey, Jordan and Dominique here, and I am actually going to talk to you guys today about leadership. Leadership is something that a lot of people believe they possess the quality of. Though many don't fully understand what it means to be an effective leader and what comes with it. Oftentimes, I have been placed in a role of leadership, not necessarily against my will, but pretty much before the option was presented to me, meaning elected or appointed. Oftentimes I think about this, why I get chosen in this capacity for these kind of things. And it comes down to a mixture of a few things. Natural personality traits is definitely one part of it. Apparently I come off as confident, um, well-spoken, articulate, knowledgeable. And those are the things that attribute to people electing me into positions of leadership. Just for examples, um, you know, at work, oftentimes being placed at the head of teams for group projects or volunteer to go help this team fulfill this kind of situation and being told to lead my specific team in coaching sessions or responsibilities is what I will say. Leadership starts with added responsibilities. A lot of people want to be in charge because of the, uh, I don't know, not the assumption, the glamorized image of leadership or rulers. And please check your ego at the door when we have this conversation because when I'm talking about rulers and, and leaders and things like that, I'm only talking about the qualities and the responsibilities that come with the roles. I'm not talking about like regal or just to put it plainly, I'm not rich. I'm not comparing myself to a king or an emperor by saying that I have it all put together, that I have massive amounts of wealth and stuff like that. No, this is actually looking beyond that because that is the, the scope that people think of when they think of leadership is the crown and the throne and the authority. But it starts with sacrifice. Leadership is something where you sacrifice your comfortability, you sacrifice your well-being, your thoughts and opinions, your happiness sometimes for the well-being of the population. Not off of the whim of the, dude, the people that you like or your homies. It's not about doing the thing that makes that girl want to give it up to you. It's actually oftentimes about ignoring a lot of the outside influences and focusing on a goal with a higher level of concentration than the average person is able to muster up on their own. That is why people need leaders. It's an important thing to bring up because in this day and age, we're in an era where it's, I'll, I'll call it the intellectual, anti-intellectual era. It's an era where everybody thinks that they know everything, but everybody has become so lazy with their studies because of the fact that we have the answer to any question at our fingertips provided to us through the internet. We rely more on that collective knowledge base than we do on our own actual knowledge. And when we do that so long, 
we lose it. It's kind of like how your teacher told you not to use calculators because if you use calculators too much, you're gonna forget how to do the math in your head. And of course, we still know that two plus two equals four, but can you do cosine equations? Like, can you do trigonometry in your head? No, you need a scientific calculator. There was a time before people needed scientific calculators to do trigonometry. Now it was basic. They probably didn't even call it trigonometry at that time. I'm not a math expert. But I'm saying all this to say that there is a certain element of muscle memory and repetition that comes with working out your brain, just like any other muscle. Tying that back into what I'm originally talking about, the average person really does not like to think for themselves because of the effort that's required with it. The effort to go study and find multiple sources and prove your theories. That is why people need leaders. Not only is it that a lot of people with average intellect are too lazy to do these things, we also have quite a bit of people on the planet that have below average intellect. And it's not, we're not supposed to look down on them or make fun of them or forsake them. A true leader sees a responsibility in taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. And that goes right back to the sacrifices that you have to make of your well-being and your happiness and your time and your dreams and all these other things. Because when you're caring for a collective of people, you have to account for the weakest one in your group, right? It's like a pack of wolves. They only go as fast as the slowest person, the slowest wolf in the pack moves. And they put the slowest wolf in the pack either in the middle or in the front so that everybody else can keep an eye on it and keep him protected from the elements. And that slows down the pace of the pack. And sometimes decisions have to be made to protect the remaining pack. And that would mean at a time when they can't feasibly save the weakest link, knowing when to cut your losses and say, well, we've done all we can. Twofold hard decision. Looking at somebody who you are easily outpacing, looking back at them and saying, no, that's my pack, that's my tribe and extending your hand to them is something that is important in leadership. Knowing full and well that that is gonna make it harder for you to accomplish a mission that you might have been able to accomplish easier on your own. But the benefit and reward of accomplishing something with a group is oftentimes far greater than what can be enjoyed on your own. That's actually why we come together as society in the first place. We can say it's because it makes life easier, meaning like I don't have to be the shelter builder and the food gatherer and the window maker and the plate maker and the clothes maker and all of that stuff for my family, or I don't have to wander around uh, naked from shelter to shelter killing and hunting animals in order to sustain my own life and fight against other humans for said sustenance. That's how it would be without leadership, without community. And we don't want that. So we know that we have to compromise a little bit of what we personally individually want to work together. A lot of people ignore that every single day or they buck the system like a lot of people if this system that we were born into meaning life as we know it society civilization politics government economics everything preloaded in the way that we do with capitalism and in a democratic republic and all of these things that we experience in the united states if that wasn't preloaded a lot of us would never come to that ever 
a lot of us wouldn't even be a, would be alive, to be honest with you. Probably including myself because I know that I haven't developed a lot of skills that it takes to make it in raw wilderness. Something to work on, especially as a man. Because that reality is never too far away from us, no matter how technologically advanced we get. But the thing that keeps us away from that is leadership. You would say it's cooperation, but really, 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 without the leadership, there is no cooperation. People do not, out of whim or even out of necessity, just come together without leadership and diplomacy. Because we're savages. We're animals in a lot of different ways. And left to our own devices, we're going to move pretty selfishly. It's instinctual. But I also believe that it's instinctual in an evolutionary capacity to realize the qualities of togetherness. That's why we have prides of lions and packs of wolves and ganders of geese that fly in bees. There's alignments to it and leaders are the ones who take those alignments and put them together and oversee them and fix the pieces of the equation that are broken in order to make sure that it all moves smoothly. A lot of times it means that you are going to put in more time and effort than those who you are leading, a common misconception Everybody wants to be the boss CEO of the company because they think that they get to ride around in the Mercedes in the back and get a massage while they make millions of dollars. And that's really not the reality for most entrepreneurs. It's late nights, early mornings, sleepless, sleepless days. Stress, anxiety, fear. All of these things come with business. All of these things come with leadership. And that's the entrepreneurial aspect of it. A lot of people think, oh man, if I was just the CEO of the company, man, I do so much for this company that I should run this company. Little do they know that in that position, once again, they would crumble. It's a very different ball game. So many people in this world go based off of how people feel about them. As a leader, you know that's one of the first things that you're going to have to abandon because people are automatically not going to like you, not going to want to be your friend, not going to want to vibe with you, and definitely not going to want to respect your authority or your opinion. And you have to be okay with that. You have to be completely fine with that and let it play out how it does. When I first had an opportunity at leadership, I was working at a gas station and I had become a supervisor, which like, oh man, big boss with the bucks. No, not really, but it was something that was, once again, thrust upon me. I wanted, I was an employee. I wanted to make more money and stuff like that. My manager was like, no, you gotta be, you gotta be here. You gotta do this and stuff. So I was quickly thrown into that position elevated to a supervisor position where I was running the night shifts and everything like that. But basically I, I set this up to say that when I got put in that position, that was when I got the first taste of how people treat you. And like I said, it comes with a lot of dislike, whether it's genuine dislike, whether it's um, a feeling like testing your capabilities or your competence. It could be a person who's jealous and feels like they should be in your position. It could be a person who feels like nobody should be in a position of leadership. Nobody can tell me what to do. And there are the people who will smile in your face and act like they're on your side or on your team. And the whole rest of the while be talking to 
the other coworkers about how much of a jackass you are or how stupid you are, or how you don't know what you're doing or talking to the boss about you treating them this way or that way or the other way and they don't like that. It all comes with it. And then the test on you isn't about pleasing all of them. When I was young, I used to get so caught up. I was like, dude, I'm just trying to do my job. I'm just trying to make sure that we accomplish everything that we need to before the daytime and being resented for telling people to work with a certain pace, a certain level of integrity. And I used to sit here and I'll be like, but if I just let everybody do their own thing, when the morning time comes and the first shifters come in here, they're going to look at me and the piece of shit building that I'm serving them and be like, what the, what were you guys doing? And I won't have anything to tell them. And I would sit and I would have meetings with my boss, the general manager of the store, and I would tell her. <laughs> Looking back on it, it's very comical knowing what I know about these type of politics. But I would sit there and tell her, like, man, I just, I just don't know. Like, these people, I tell them to do this, and they just don't do it. They don't listen. They don't do what they're supposed to do. And that was true. Like, that was, that was true. It was true what I was saying. But it doesn't matter. And she, the general manager, would say things to console me. But I'm a very intuitive person. I always read behind what somebody tells me to my face. Like, you could tell me something, and I, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm actually listening. But I'm also hearing what's behind it, the inflection, the hidden meaning, the body language, everything that comes with that. And she was telling me, oh, it's okay, you know, like consoling me and stuff like that. But I could really tell she was saying, mm, maybe it was almost like a test. It was almost like a, I didn't understand what it was back then. I thought it was just a being thrown to the wolves type of situation. But now that I'm older, I know that it was really about seeing how I deal with the scrutiny that comes with leadership. And I wasn't doing a good job at it at that time because I thought that having people like you was a part of it. And I wanted people to like me more so than I wanted to be a leader at that time. Actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you at that time in my life, I was just, I was going through some things. I felt very lonely. This is all because of my personal life, not because of like employment or anything like that. But I was lonely and I, I wanted friends and I had good friends. I had friends at my job who I got along with decently and stuff like that. So when I got put in charge of them, I will admit at the beginning, I was worried about how that was going to affect my relationships. But I knew that my career was also important and the money that I was making was getting better. That's where I could actually like, you know, afford life. So I wasn't going to stop going for that because of where I came from and I knew that I had plenty of friends when I was in the worst parts of my life and it did not help at all. But the money helps. So I said quickly that I have my friends in real life. I have my people in real life. At my job, I have to make the sacrifice of knowing that not everybody's going to be my friend, but I have to move with the responsibility and integrity that I know that I want to operate with in order to fulfill my duty. I learned that towards the end of my time there with the gas station because of other reasons and stuff. I mean, really, my path in life was not, you know, even if you get to the highest heights of that kind of stuff, I'm gonna be a, g a general manager of a damn gas station for my life. So that time passed and it was on to bigger and better things. And those lessons that I learned when I was going there, I took with me. And I think about it very often now. And right now, once again, like I was saying, I naturally get thrust into those positions of leadership, the opportunities of leadership. I'm not a supervisor. I'm not a manager right now. I'm, I'm thankfully not entry level employee, senior level 
you know, employee for what I do and stuff like that. Highest of like heights before you start overseeing other people. But I still get those things beside the offerings and stuff. I'm still get appointed many times to control and manage certain projects and stuff like that because of the skills that I've been developing. Everything that I mentioned about that I came to the epiphany of during that time at the gas station learning that more so than people liking you and stuff like that. It's about the respect when it comes to this. These qualities never left me because I realized that the same way that you view leadership, the same way that I'm describing leadership, if you want to get ahead or get somewhere that other people aren't in life, you're going to have to do the same thing. If you're into entrepreneurial shit, I'm sorry if you guys can hear that outside. It's, they love the they love the loud music in my neighborhood. It's perfectly fine though. But if you're one of those people who wants to get somewhere in life, make something of yourself in life, you have to go against the scrutiny. You have to go against the criticism. You have to go against people not understanding your mission, your goal, your purpose, your strategy. And you have to not only rise above them and ignore to a certain degree the criticisms, you have to convert them. You have to convert them by listening to the naysaying, processing it in an appropriate fashion, and overcoming the objections. Also, keeping your eye out for truth. Because sometimes there'll be accurate criticisms. And that's why you have to maintain a stiff upper lip when people are telling you about yourself. Because there's always going to be blind spots. On their end, they may not understand why you operate the way that you do or why you do certain things that you do. On your end, you may not understand why they perceive the way that you do things that you do in a certain way. And you may not understand why they react to the things that you do or say in a certain way. But you have to keep your eye out for, is there something in between? Is there a, a miss in the communication where I could maybe further elaborate or do or show something to display more accurately my vision on a specific topic? Or am I wrong? <laughs> am I wrong? Do I need to heed the word of somebody else and make the necessary adjustments? These are both very prominent scenarios in leadership. Sometimes you have to say, no, I know what's best, even though it's very unpopular. And sometimes you have to say, maybe the unpopular thing or the thing that I disagree with is the way that I'm supposed to go. Or sometimes you have to compromise and say, the most popular thing may not be the best thing from an efficiency standpoint, but because of the morale perspective and the uh, cooperative aspect of it, sometimes it actually makes more sense to go a less efficient route if it makes people happier. And that's where I'm going to get into what has been happening here recently um, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Because I've been very outspoken about my personal opinion and thoughts on Roe v. Wade and abortion in totality. But one thing I need to make very clear to people is that as far as the United States goes, because I'm not a globalist and until we can get to a point where we can trust other nations have the global best interest of the population in mind and not just whoever their people are, then we can talk about that. But right now I'm talking about in reference to the United States of America. I don't support abortion. I don't, I don't, I'm very happy that Roe v. Wade was overturned. And if it were up to me personally, abortion would be illegal in the United States of America. I know that that is very uh, stern beliefs. Some people might view it as very extreme beliefs. I 
don't think that it's extreme, but I do acknowledge that it's stern because I'm a big person on accountability. But the point of the matter that I'm bringing this up right now is because if we had the average person or yeah, the average person of standard prudence in decision making, the ideal example NPC person who we use in um, scenarios hypothetically for insurance or investing and things like that, the average person's standard decision. And I hate to say this because I'm always gonna, I'm gonna stress that these opinions should be educated on something as heavily weighed as Roe v. Wade and abortion. So I'm going to, I would always test somebody as to why they feel the way that they do. But the truth is that <clears throat> If the majority of the United States of America genuinely believed that we should have abortion up until the day of birth, and we came to not only a majority of 51%, but if we start getting into 66.6666666% and so on, two thirds and above, then we start having to make compromise for the general population. Now, do I believe that if the average person was educated enough on what abortion was, what it actually is by definition and everything that comes with it, do I think that they would agree with it? No, I'm fairly confident that they wouldn't. Do I think that the average person is going to take their time, the, the time that it takes to fully understand what comes with these things? Of course not. They don't do that with anything, anything, even if it's life or death, a poor house or a mansion, people do not do their due diligence. So unfortunately, if the majority of people decide that Roe, like that abortion should be legal in that way, even if it's a completely ignorant decision, I accept that it, it could come down the pipeline. Because those are the kind of decisions that you have to make when you're a leader. Sometimes being a leader is nothing more than acknowledging that you're not actually making the decisions for everybody. Sometimes you're collectively gathering the decisions, funneling them, putting them in the most digestible way and hoping that people don't tear their heads off and stuff like that and that you don't go crazy from the idiocy that's being spouted off from the average person. And you have to wear that all on your face without looking at them like, yo, you're stupid as shit for even saying that. And you have to help them and you have to sacrifice your well-being and slow your pace down in order to do that. This is what comes with being a leader. It's not fun. A lot of people wouldn't enjoy it. A lot of people aren't cut out for it. A lot of people think they want it and don't know what it really is. So I figured I'd make a quick video on it, giving my thoughts and perspective on some of the less glamorized aspects of leadership. I could go all day about <laughs> this specific topic, but I just wanted to get that off. And I want to say to anybody who is struggling with these thoughts or these feelings, um, maybe you're in a role of leadership and it feels uneasy. You don't know if you're doing a good job. Maybe you're thinking about moving into a position of leadership and you don't know what comes with it. And you want to get more realistic with that. Maybe you don't have the greatest rapport with your leadership and you want to get more insight into how their brains work. I think this is a good video for you. Uh, if you made it this far, you've already watched the video. So if you fit in that description, go ahead and rewind the video and run it back one more time. See, see what I'm talking about here. Cause I believe that, you know, I believe that what I've said here is general basic enough that it can help anybody out with any pursuits of leadership in multiple roles across multiple different platforms because I know that it's all helped me. All right, thank you so much for checking out my video and stay tuned for the next one. Have a great rest of your night.